In this video, I'm going to show you three MCP servers that I rely on in Cursor AI and how they can seriously boost your productivity. Let's go. One big issue with AI software development is the model doesn't have up-to-date documentation and good examples at its disposal. And while Cursor does have some features around this and also some web browsing features, for whatever reason, they just don't work very well. So this first MCP server goes a long way to fixing this. And it's called Context7. This is the website. And it's basically the mecca for any kind of documentation for any library or technology you can think of. And it's kept up to date. You can see here for Next.js, for example, it has almost 4,000 snippets of code and it's updated today. And you can access all this documentation through the MCP server. And it's really easy to install. There's no API key or anything. You just need to copy this into Kersha settings under MCP and add a new global server. As an example of how powerful this is, I noticed Superbase has released some new UI libraries lately. So they have one for social auth, the drop zone one, for example. It'd be great just to drop these into my application that uses Superbase, but these are new. So Cursor's not gonna know about them unless you give it the documentation. Let me show you one other hint. I went into my global rules and I said abbreviation C7 means use context seven MCP server. In this application resume voodoo I'm building, I have this upload resume button that brings up a drop zone. It works okay, but if you look at the drop zone code that Cursor gave me, it's kind of ugly. So now in my chat, I can just say C7, which I'm telling you to use context seven, find the super base drop zone UI component for Next.js and implement that to upload the resume. So now I'm going to call the MCP tool and you can see here the library name it's calling, so super base. And then the topic is drop zone. And let's pick it up right here. It's the right documentation for implementing that component. Actually, the, you can notice the data in it is 2025-0421, which is actually today. So this is a really good example of how that's going to work. So now that it had the context of that new super base UI component, it just implemented it here. This seems to actually work better than the old one. The only thing to keep in mind about context seven though, it's not magic. I had to know a bit about what I was doing. I need to know to look for drop zone, for example, in super base to get that component. Of all these thousands and thousands of snippets, you need to kind of guide it in the right direction. And to know how to guide it, you need to know a bit of the foundations. When I'm building web applications with AI, I love using Superbase. It gives all the backend functionality I need, such as authentication and data storage. It's a bit of a context switch to always go from cursor into Superbase to do changes in Superbase, then come back to cursor. This next MCP solves a lot of that. And Superbase maintains an official MCP server. And again, it's really easy to install. The only difference this time is you have to give it a personal access token. And then just use that when you configure it inside Cursor. And for Resume Voodoo, all the data I store is all in Superbase. So now I can just go into Cursor and ask for Resume Voodoo Superbase table profiles, show me the columns. And now it's gonna call the list projects MCP tool and then the list tables. And then from there, it'll just give me all the columns in that table. So for this one, I actually wanna add an email address to here. I have the ID and clerk ID, but I actually want the email address. So I'm gonna say add the email address as a column, deploy it to Superbase and update it in the application. So now what Krush is gonna do is it's not only gonna apply the change to Superbase, and you see that with the apply migration tool here, I'm gonna update my application to add that email address and then pass it to Superbase as data. So if I look at my Superbase table, now I see the email addresses here and it's a null. Now saying not only has it created that new column in the database, but it's actually updated the application to save that data. So if we go back to resume data, maybe let's make a change to the data. Go back, if we refresh in Superbase, now we see the email address. So we're able to add new data, have it automatically deployed to Superbase, and update it on our application all in one shot with the use of the Superbase MCP server. It's so powerful and it's such a time saver. Stay up to date on the latest in AI software development. Make sure you subscribe to the AI Unleashed News. It's the first link in the description and I hope to see you there. One frustrating thing when you're working in Cursor and you have runtime errors that don't show up in the code, they can get fixed automatically by Cursor. You have to go into the console, copy the error message and then paste it back into Cursor and hopefully get a fix from there. This next MCP server makes that so much more seamless. Google's MCP takes care of a lot of that, and actually more, as you'll see here in a second. The install on this one's a bit more involved, but it's worth it. So the first thing you have to do is install a Chrome extension. And a tip on this one, Chrome actually releases a version called Chrome Dev. It's just a dev experimental version of Chrome. And that's where I install this extension, and it works great. That way it's not gonna mess with your main browser. So now if you hit F12 and you go into your developer tools, you're gonna see a new one here called Browser Tools MCP. And that's gonna connect to a server. So it's, to install this, you also have to install a local MCP server. Once you do that, then register it inside Cursor. Check out what it gives you. It can say load latest console logs and evaluate. It's gonna to know to go to the MCP server and get the console logs. And this is gonna explain them all and give you really good information about what they mean. So this is so useful when you come across errors that don't show up necessarily in the code themselves, but just show up at runtime in the ap application, 
You can use this to go in, find the errors automatically and fix them. You can also get this MCP to take screenshots of the application at any steps. You can say, take screenshot of app and evaluate the UI. So now it's gonna call the MCP tool to take screenshots. It's gonna give you an evaluation of the layout components, visual design, etc. There's even some more powerful tools inside this MCP. Let's say run performance analysis. And it's gonna call the run performance audit MCP tool. And they give you an audit and score of how your application actually performs, which is really nice to have. So lots of good stuff in this browser tools MCP. And let me know in the comments, is it an MCP server you're using that gave you a real productivity boost? I'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.